Hi, everyone. My name is Ryan Paling, and you're listening to History in the Making. The Montreal Canadiens select. The Montreal Canadiens are proud to select. Yes, Barry Kotkanemi. Ryan Paling. Cole Caulfield. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another episode of History in the Making, the official podcast of the Montreal Canadiens focused on the future of the most storied franchise in pro sports. History in the Making is brought to you by Tricolor Sport, Montreal's official team store. From lifestyle brands to jerseys and beyond, Tricolor Sport has a style for every sports fan in your life. Are you looking for a Ryan Paling piece of merchandise? Tricolor Sport has you covered. Use coupon code HISTORYCH at checkout to receive 10% off your order. This week's guest, and we teased it during the ad, is none other than Ryan Paling. Uh, we're going to get to it. We're going to speak to him. Hopefully, we get a chance to really discuss what happened last year because, as we all know, um, it didn't go perfectly. However, this season, and this happens a lot to young guys, um, things have fallen into line for, for Ryan Paling. It's going very, very well. Uh, I fear a lot of people are going to be deleting some uh, early tweets that they wrote last season. So we'll get into that. Um, we all know that he's a very important part of the organization, so it's nothing but good things that Ryan Paling has found his rhythm in the AHL. But first, let's talk prospects. We saw Otto Leskinen got called up to the Canadians. It, it might have taken some people, you know, a little by surprise, but one of the main reasons that about Rocket are so dominant this year, and, and I'm using that word correctly, they are dominant, is that top pairing. The top pairing is Otto Leskinen and Corey Schunemann. Now, Otto Leskinen has developed into this power play quarterback. He moves the puck. He's confident, a lot stronger. His biggest issue, <clears throat> when we spoke at the Belleville tournament, that was the first time he actually joined uh, the Canadians organization. There was a rookie tournament in Belleville. And I asked him, like, hey, I'm like, by, by the way, you stood out. It, it was clear right off the bat, this guy's good. Like, this guy is standing out. He's absolutely going to, you know, be a good pro. And he said, I asked him, like, hey, like, are you happy with your tournament? He said, absolutely not. I could have done better. I'm too weak. You know, I kind of took a step back. Sometimes things are lost in translation. I mean, his English is fantastic, way better than my Finnish. But I was like, what do you mean you're too weak? He said, well, if I need to play in the NHL, I got to get stronger. I can't get pushed around. The fact of the matter is Otto Leskinen gets that puck out of the zone way before opponents hit him. But he knows he's going to have to get into those battles. So he focused on his strength. Um, you know, we spoke to uh, Stefano Lani last, last week and we talked about, uh, you know, Otto Leskinen improving his overall strength. And that's something that Ryan Paling also improved. So things are going well on the side of the Val Rocket. We're seeing guys like Leskinen get called up. Uh, it's with good reason. He's been fantastic. We also saw recently, uh, not too long ago, the Yan Mishak contract. Now, I'm going to ask Ryan a little later in this interview about Yan Mishak. For those that have been following along, I ask almost everyone uh, that's been on about him. I find it fascinating. Very young guy. He could be in the OHL right now. Um, one of the most exuberant, happiest guys to be on the ice. Like He loves what he does. I remember draft day when I spoke to him. All the other prospects are kind of, you know, maybe a little overwhelmed. This guy was in the Czech Republic, all smiles, up late, late at night, just so excited uh, to be part of the Canadians. He actually visited Montreal with um, none other than Peter Svoboda at one point. So there's a link there with the Habs, both very young when they made their pro debuts. And um, Peter Svoboda used to actually play tennis with Jan Mishak's father. So there's a nice little connection there. But what I really like about him is just a high-end skill level. He wants to learn, and that's exactly what you want to hear from your prospects. Now, you're going to notice, I call him Jan Mishak. That is his name. When someone from Europe comes or anywhere comes to a new area, a new culture, they lose a lot of um, you know, their personal identity. They lose contact with their family. You, know, you, you lose a lot of those meals. So to me, I think it's very, very important that we respect their names. It's not even respecting their names. It's just saying it properly. And uh, I know, I know, I know I'm being cheesy here, but a lot of the times when you come over at such a young age, keep in mind, he's so young, you just lose touch with so many things that are important to your culture. So I think it's so important that we at least give him his name, you know, let him have his name. It is very important. So it is Yan Mishak, just like you'll hear Anthony Mercat say on the radio, he's a pro, he does it well. So it's Yan Mishak. And finally, I'd like to talk about Gallagher Light. For those watching the Laval Rocket, you know exactly who I'm talking about. He's a rookie. He's a little older than most rookies, but it's Rafael Harvey Pinot. He's doing great. I say Gallagher Light, and I know that's a comparison people throw out all the time. At the draft, anyone's under 5'10", Gallagher Light. Rafael Harvey Pinot actually plays that role. He's in front of the net. He's, uh, you'd say he's eaten a lot of lumber. Um, his shins probably 
you know, look like speed bumps, but, uh, you know, he's getting hacked and slashed, but he's scoring those goals. He's off to a great start. And um, I, I know for a fact the coaching staff loves what they're seeing about Rafael Harvey Pinal. At first, I thought, hey, man, he was a late pick. I was thinking maybe a chance to be a good pro in the AHL. Now I'm starting to think the NHL is within the realm of possibility. So it's going well for Rafael Harvey Pinal and the rest of the Rocket. Now let's jump right in. This week's mailbag and Frantanimo wants to know, do the Rocket have what it takes to win the Calder Cup this season? I'd say normally. Yes, there is no Calder Cup this season, unfortunately. Um, but here's what I will say: if there was, absolutely, um, I would go. I would go put a, a, little, a nickel on that. You know, um, what's happening right now essentially is that there's no teams in, in the HL that want to play the Rocket, and this was way before just a North Division. So they're they have tons of depth, they have tons of scoring, really well structured. Um, you know, they're losing players left and right, and coaches left and right, but they're still maintaining it. And the reason they're maintaining that dominant level of play is because of the attention to detail. So We're going to hear from Ryan Paling shortly, but he's going to talk about that attention to detail, the preparation, and why the Laval Rocket are so good. So, normal year, absolutely. Calder Cup winners wouldn't hesitate. Um, for the first time since 1937, there will be no Calder Cup this year. And in general, actually, this is funny because we saw recently, um, yes, Barry Kutkinemi got played on the wing. Now, we talk about Kutkinemi very rarely on here, but he's still... Like one, I believe he's the 10th youngest guy in the league, even though it's his third year in the NHL. And a lot of concern about him not playing center. Now, I get it. You want a player to develop as a center, to be a center. However, um, this isn't his first rodeo on the wing. For those that aren't aware, Jesperi Kutkinemi played on the wing in Finland, mostly on the wing. Um, actually, played very rarely uh, at center. He did in the international tournaments, but for his pro, uh, pro team, absolutely not. So... Um, we have to know that all elite centers at one point in their career played on the wing. It's called versatility, right? So you want to be able to establish that offensive instinct without maybe necessarily worrying about the defensive side. Learning to be a center in the NHL is such, I mean, good. Like we're Habs fans. We know how difficult that is. Um, I think Kutimi's done a great job. This is an opportunity to maybe perhaps score a little more playing on, you know, with high end wingers. And here's, why I know it's going to be okay because his quote via John Lou at the time when he got put on it was, it's an honor. They're great players. What could be better than getting a chance to show what I got with playing with them, you know? So it's an opportunity. I don't think it'll ruin anything. Uh, and and I, I can't wait to see what the, uh, you know, down the road, what this will bring to him. Every little bit of experience counts in the long run. And I'm absolutely not worried about, like he's played center his entire NHL career. A couple games in the wing will not hurt. We'll be right back with our guest, Ryan Paling, also a center. Uh, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about uh, how difficult it is to become a professional center after the break. By now, you've seen them in action. They are the first retro jerseys. The Canadians are wearing them. They are blue. They are gorgeous. You guys love them so much that they were sold out at one point, but they're back in stock. So head to tricolospa.com right now. Gear up and get yours today. And we're back with our very special guest, Canadians prospect Laval Rocket forward, Ryan Paling. Ryan, how's it going? I'm doing good. How are you, Mark? I can't complain, but I mean, I guess I can complain. I've always wanted to go to the Calgary Stampede. I saw you guys get there dressed up as cowboys. Was that really for you guys or was that for Joel that you guys ended up going to the Stampede? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's for all of us. I mean, I just ended up, I think a lot of us just ended up watching Yellowstone too. So it was kind of perfect timing. I don't know if you've heard about that show or not. So I think that's kind of the, what the inspiration came out of is doing that. So I think it was fun and a little laid back and honestly, it could have helped us too. I mean, we kind of bonded there as a group and it was a lot of fun. So let's talk about that. First of all, I was thinking it's unfortunate, but I get the, the sense that Joel would be a really good bull rider. I don't know why, but like, <laughs> like lassoing those, those calves. But let's talk about that. You haven't had a chance to bond a ton. Um, how, how has that dynamic been in the locker room, Ryan? I know you guys are tight. There's not a lot of clicks in the Rocket, uh, the Laval Rocket um, locker room. Wow, that was a tough word for me to get out. How has it been this year, just in terms of relationships, not necessarily off uh, on ice, but off ice? Yeah, it's definitely a different dynamic. I mean, you can't really do anything as a team. So I think that's where kind of being on the road was nice because when you're at home, you're kind of just going to the rink and you can hang out there, but then everyone just ends up going home. So you do what you're told, but then on the road, I think it's a little different where you get to spend more time, whether they're in the meal room or they have lounges for us that we can hang out in. And so I think that's kind of where it was nice to go on a little two two week road trip and just hang out with the guys and kind of enjoy them and learn stuff about them that you didn't really know before. 
that doesn't involve hockey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, those small things that you usually do when you're, you know, in a, in a normal season. Now, it hasn't been a normal season, but the Laval Rocket, I mean, you have to tell me, Ryan, why are you guys so darn good? Like, what's the secret sauce here? You guys are, you guys are, I can say, you guys are dominant. Like, you guys are really dominating your opponents. What's the secret sauce for the Laval Rocket this year? Yeah, I, I don't, I think that, I mean, we all, we're a very structured team, and I think everyone's kind of buying into that. And I think that's where it goes. I mean, it's it's so easy. I mean, not every night you're going to have your best game. Or you're not going to have your legs. But when you can kind of just lean on your structure and everyone knows what you're going to be doing at the same time, I think it makes it a lot easier for you to just trust one another. And I think that's kind of the biggest part for us is we've stuck to our structure really well so far in this part of the season. And it's paid off really well for us. For anyone that has not a chance to see the Laval Rocket practice structure, very big part of it. So um, let's just, it's hard work paying off. But what about you, Ryan? You surpassed your rookie totals in, in, in like a lot fewer games. You're right now, you're scoring at an incredible pace. You seem to have found your rhythm. What, what improvements have you made? What's the reason that you're finding so much success this season? Yeah, for me, I think obviously a year pro under your belt helps a lot. But I think I just... I would say the biggest thing is I, rel I relaxed. I mean, this summer I did a lot to get better off the ice. I mean, I feel way stronger and I think that helped me a lot, but also just kind of relaxing and realizing that there's more to life than hockey. And as weird as it sounds, it kind of helps you play hockey. I mean, I, I love playing hockey and I enjoy it. And I remember like throughout this summer, like I missed it so much. I didn't play a game in 13 months. So for me to remember, Hey, like the reason you're playing is because you love it so much. So don't let that get away from you. So, For me, I just show up excited to the rink every day, and I think that's helped me a lot. Which is fantastic to hear. I know Habs fans are getting excited. What, what was the training like this summer? I know you said you didn't get on the ice for 13 months, which is ridiculous. Um, how did you stay in shape, not just physically, but mentally as well throughout this whole time off? Yeah, I think it was good. I, uh, I mean, this pandemic obviously shows you a lot about someone. And for me, I think it showed me a lot about just I, I missed my family a lot, so it was good to I mean, I was so constantly focused on hockey all the time. Like, and nowadays, there's not really many off seasons. You're always training and there's so many camps. You can go to this and that. And this time was a per perfect time to just kind of wind down and really focus on your family and relationships with friends and other people like that. So I think I did that, but also just having nine, 10 months to really work out and work on your body type. I think that was a big part for myself. And I think that I, I, I lost a little bit of weight and but I felt like I got stronger. And I think mentally when you're kind of at that right weight that you find it, it, it helps a lot. So I think that was the biggest thing for me is just kind of finding myself throughout those last eight, nine months of quarantine, I guess. So Joel loves to give homework. I know that he gets, you know, whenever off season, he says you have to go do what, what was his homework this se this off season for you while you're away from the ring? Cause I know, I know he was checking up on you, right? That's how Joel yeah. does. Uh, yeah. He's pretty intense. What did he tell you to, to work on specifically uh, Ryan? Um, I think just everyone in the organization in general just wanted me to get stronger. And I think that you see it, see it quite well with my skating and just in battles. I think those are mm -hmm. two things that it can help you out with quite, quite well. So, I mean, I, I just feel like I focused on that as just getting bigger and faster. And I mean, it's little things like that, that you don't really, I mean, you can, but with nine months of training, I think it's way easier to kind of focus on that. So that was, that was really big for me anyone that's happened to and by the way guys if you haven't watched the laval rocket yet this year do yourself a favor and tune in and you'll see ryan flying i mean the speed is <laughs> obvious and the confidence is obvious ryan how do you build that confidence i mean like you have to score to get the confidence you have to have confidence to score how, like how does it start how do you build up a level of confidence that can feel comfortable playing uh, professional hockey yeah i think uh, i think the biggest thing is just trusting yourself. I mean, that's, that's all you can do. I mean, people are going to always comment what they have to say, but at the end of the day, you, you know, who you are as a person and, and what you can do. So I think for me, it's just staying true to myself and whether I go out there and I think this year, it's not so much about scoring points and this and that. It's just, you go out there and you got to focus on the things that you can handle. I mean, before a game, you can't say, Hey, I'm going to get two, three points tonight. because you have no idea, but you can say, Hey, I'm going to have a great attitude on the bench and, and work, work hard. So I think those two things are just the biggest things that I've brought to every game. And And then the points will come or you'll have a good game and sometimes you don't score. But I think that's the biggest thing. So so maybe stop trying to control it as much. And then that's where it starts to come to you. Okay, well, then exactly. let's talk about last year, Ryan. 
I, 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 I'm going to let you say it, but I don't think you had a particularly easy season. Um, there's a lot of pressure from guys like me shoving mics in your, in your, in your <laughs> face every, every day. You know, why aren't you scoring? Why aren't you scoring? Yeah. How was it last year from, um, there was a fair amount of criticism. Let's be honest. I don't know if you pay attention to it or not, but um, obviously people were quick with the criticism. Now, obviously they've pulled back and they've gone the other way. How was yeah. that last season dealing with all that pressure? Yeah, it was it was definitely tough for me. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't lie and say it was easy, but uh, I think it teaches you a lot. I mean, it, it definitely teaches you a lot and you can learn from it. So for me, I think I just I was so caught up in it. And you have a great game and you think you're the best player in the world and you have the worst game and you think you're the worst player ever. So I think that just level of consistency and just bringing your best every night and then also realizing that you just got to stay level headed through the all. I think that's kind of what it taught me. And just you can't you can't look into too much of that stuff because regardless of how you do, there's going to be people on both sides of the spectrum. And I think we us in the media particularly figured it out once at one point your coach turned to us. Well, it was literally me and said, hey, can you just give him a minute to breathe at this point? (laughs) Right. It's the expecting we all expect everything to work perfectly, but. Just as you did, I learned in the AHL. I mean, it takes a while to learn these things. So let's talk about that relationship, the learning process with Joel Bouchard. How has that relationship been with the coaching staff uh, in particular with uh, Joel? Yeah, it's been really good. I think, I mean, every coach you have, there's always different relationships with, but with Joel is, I appreciate the most out of him is that he's always going to be honest with you. So I think you have to respect that is he, whether you like it or not, he's going to be honest with you. And I think that you, you don't want to take it with a grain of salt. You just, I mean, there's so many things that you can learn from him. I mean, he's a perfect coach to kind of train you to become a professional hockey player and honestly make that next step. So I think consistency is kind of the biggest thing that he's always preached to me is, Hey, like consistently like night in night out, you got to just bring your game. And I think I've done a lot better with that this year and it's paying off. And I think that's just like one of the things that he's really talked to me about. And I think that I've responded well with You've been scoring, uh, I mean, last week there was a, or I guess a couple of weeks ago, a couple of clutch game-winning goals. It seems to be your, your thing now. I mean, you're not quite at Jeff Petrie's level. <laughs> yeah, but, exactly. But I, I have to ask you, guys say, I don't care when they score the game-winning goal. Is that true? Come on. It's got to feel good to, to put that, get to, you know, to end the game. That's it. I score the most important goal of the game, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, you don't really think about it at the time, but I mean, obviously one of them is in overtime. So that's always really special when you, when you can get that goal and the game ends it. But uh, yeah, there's not much, there's not much that you really think about. It's a little different no. scoring like early on, but it is, it is cool to have. And like it is, it is a stat. So it's nice. I mean, it's cool that I got that in back to back games as well. Did you go see Corey? First of all, I'm so impressed by his skating, but uh, Schooneman, am I saying his, his last name right? Schooneman? Yeah, that- yeah, yeah. Okay, he set you up really well for that game-winning goal, right? I mean, like, what do you say to him in that scrum after that? Like, thanks for, thanks for making yeah. all that space, or what? How does that? Yeah, go? exactly. Just nice pass. Like you said, he's a great skater too. I mean, he's open ice and even in tight. I mean, when he's got the breakout and he he's really good at kind of quick turns and just turning it up ice. I think you can kind of anticipate that now. Sometimes when he has the puck and try to cheat a little bit. So I mean, you always appreciate guys like that who can make their own space for for themselves. So since we got a lot wrong with uh, jumping the gun a little bit last year with your overall play, let's flip the script a little bit. What do we as analysts or experts get wrong <laughs> about prospects the most, the more, uh, you know, most often? Um, I don't know. I'd say the biggest thing is nowadays, I feel like everything's just at the touch of your fingertips. Right. So everything, everyone kind of is used to just instant satisfaction. So when it doesn't happen that way, I think people get a little frustrated, but you have to realize that everyone's different and that everyone's going to progress at their own pace. So some guys can jump into the NHL right away and make a difference, but some guys it might take three or four years and it may not be beneficial now, but down the road, it'll be good for them in the long run. So I think that's kind of just not just, just with hockey, but with everything in general. As your coach would say, it's the, uh, the Amazon factor, right? They all they, yeah, they expect exactly. that to come the next day. So Speaking of, of, of impatience, I mean, you guys are playing the same teams over and over and over, and there's, you know, the fuse is getting shorter. I was, I don't think Stockton likes playing Laval very often. <laughs> In fact, I'd actually argue most opponents hate playing you guys. Why is that? Why do, why do opponents like they, they, they legitimately hate it. I, I talked to guys before the games. I love the city. I love the arena. I love everything. I hate playing against these guys. <laughs> why is that, Ryan? I, I just think it's because we don't give a lot a lot of offense up. I mean, everyone wants to come in, especially when it's such a weird season and you play the same teams, you kind of want easy games and you're hoping for it at some time, but 
I think we're such a well-conditioned team and we're very structured that it's, you really have to create your own offense. Like we're not going to give you much off of mistakes. So when people do that and they start getting frustrated, I think it helps us when we end up playing the same team four times in a row. I mean, you can see it. Sometimes guys don't have points with, and it's the third game into us and you can see the frustration build up. So that's exciting for us, but I can definitely see how teams kind of don't enjoy playing us. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, it's the same, some guys that got traded over, they said, thank God. Cause now I actually don't have to, I don't have to, you know, face these guys. So tell me what you miss. What do you miss most Ryan about just the, the you know, I guess we'll call them the before times, but uh, what, what do you miss most about, let's say a normal hockey season? Um, I don't know. That's tough. I, I, I mean, obviously the fans, the fans is obviously one of the, one of the bigger parts. But and Laval just, had some kick-ass fans. I mean, yeah, really, really good. And they were, they were great. So hopefully at some point they'll be able to come back, but I think that's obviously the biggest one. And then just, just things away from the rink, hanging out with your friends and just having those times to kind of bond. But as far as the season goes, I don't mind it that much. We don't, we don't practice a lot because we have so many games. So it's kind of nice to just get in a rhythm, especially when you're winning, it's easy to just like feel good about your game and go into those games. So, which it'll be different towards the end of the year. I think we have like four or five games in a span of like 20 days. So that'll be way different as opposed to playing every other day for the last three weeks. So that'll be, that'll actually be hard on you guys, right? Like you guys, I feel like you guys are a high tempo, ready to go all the time and maybe some time off wouldn't be the best thing. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's, I think it'll be definitely, a, it's, it won't, it'll be a challenge, but it'll just be different because of what we're used to right now. But in the same vein, like I was looking at you guys last year, first of all, you guys hit, hit the right note at the end of the season four got you guys were really playing well that game against mm-hmm. Belleville I think it was three zero anyways it was one of the most dominant games I ever saw is that how you guys maintain your momentum with this huge break because of the structure because of those intense practices yeah I think so I think it definitely kind of gets you in the right feeling I mean we we practice hard and Sometimes we'll go out there for 30 minutes, but even if we are, a coach just preaches on just being hard. And I think it's just a mentality. So when you go into the games, you're kind of ready for that. And just from the get-go, you just know that, hey, this is, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen tonight, but I know if I bring my work ethic, we'll, we should be fine. History in the Making is brought to you by Tricolor Spall, Montreal's official team store. From lifestyle brands to jerseys and beyond, Tricolor Spall has a style for every sports fan in your life. Head to tricolorspall.com and use coupon code HISTORYCH10 at checkout to receive 10% off your order. Visit tricolorspall.com today. Do you give a heads up to the new guys that join for practice? Because you know when you guys do your sprints, they're always at the back. They're always at the end there. So do you give them a heads up like, hey guys, it's a lot of work, but trust me on this, it's worth it? Or do you guys kind of just let them figure it out on their own? I think it's a mixture of both. I think that, I mean, hockey guys in general are always, they don't want to be the like the odd one out. So I think it's just a contagious factor where they see everyone else working so hard and they just, without even realizing it, kind of join in on it. So it's it's a good type of contagion because you can also have one where guys aren't working that hard and then they come in and they go, oh, I don't have to work that hard. How is it playing at the Bell Center? I mean, I know you, you, you obviously have been around the team before. I think your locker room's in a restaurant right now. Is that? Yeah, it is. It is. The, how is that? First of all, how is it getting, dre- getting ready for a game in a restaurant? It's very odd. I mean, when you walk in, there's two, uh, there's two glass walls full of wine. So it's pretty funny when you walk through there. And then you, uh, our seats are kind of scattered out throughout the entire restaurant, which is uh, it's just different. But uh, it's a, it's a pretty nice setup. I mean, they did a really good job with it, but it's definitely not something that you're used to. How how has it been in terms of keeping mental? I know you said you kind of detached a little bit from hockey this summer. Obviously, now the focus is on hockey. Has it been easy maintaining focus from game to game just because there's nothing else to do? Uh, yeah, I think that's, yeah, that's probably You kind of just it, bury but... yourself into it at this point, right? Yeah, for sure. But I think on off days like today, I don't like thinking about it that much. I got a lot of friends and family back home that I miss. So it's always nice just keeping in touch with them and just seeing what they're up to and just detaching yourself from the game. But it's different when you when you go to the rink and you just got to be mentally prepared. So I think it makes it easier when you have those off days to just get away from hockey to get excited for it when you go there the next day. Can you talk about I know that Joel Bouchard, he, he discusses often uh, like how difficult it is to be a center, right? I think you see yourself as a center, obviously, Ryan. Is For that sure. that's correct? He talks about, and it is, it's, it's the most difficult position, um, the 200 foot game, but he's been praising your 200 foot game this year. Um, is that something you focused on in particular? The, the, the other, I feel like you've always been good defensively, but it feels like really this year, he's been praising you a lot for the, the full game, not just yeah. the offensive production. 
yeah, I think that's something that I definitely did focus on. I mean, to make it to the NHL, that's always how I've seen myself as a guy that plays both ways. And I think it's, it's you take pride, you should take pride in helping in the D zone because it's just as important offensively as it is defensively. So for me, I think I've worked on it a lot. And it's honestly just what you come to realize. I mean, a lot of it's timing and there's a little bit of skill involved, but the biggest thing is just working hard. I mean, there's so many plays that you get scored on where you realize like, if you just skated that extra stride or this and that, like you, you think it's harmless, but that's what it comes down to. So I think just kind of having that work ethic to put yourself in the right spot at all times, just in case something does happen. is like the thing that I've done the most. How um, exciting is it to be on a, like a young team? I feel like you guys, obviously you have some veterans, but you guys are really darn young and good as well. It's not just young and like getting trounced out there. You guys are young and you're playing well. How fun is it to grow up with? I mean, there's guys like Yulunen. Um, there's there's guys obviously like Jan Mishak, uh, Kaden Primo, which will and, and yourself, which will eventually make it to the NHL. How fun is it to kind of grow together as a team? Yeah, it's exciting. I mean, like you said, this is especially it's it's different because this league is usually a league that it's hard to win when you're young. I mean, a lot of teams that play their young guys usually just use it as a development year, which makes sense. But at the same time, for us to be having so many young guys and still winning, I think it shows a lot of character. And I think you just have to give give your tip your hats to the older guys. I mean, they do such a good job with the young guys and just like, I don't know, praising them and just helping them kind of making little plays. I mean, it goes a long way when you tell a young guy, hey, nice play when they when they're struggling a little bit and this and that, I mean, it helps them mentally. So I think the older guys should get a, get a big deservant for that because they do a great job with us. I think Xavier Wallet's impact can't be, obviously he's not with the team right now, but his impact can't be denied. Um, and I feel like we need to give some, can you tell me about how Jordan wheels been this year? Uh, listen, it's, it's not easy for someone um, that's been playing in the NHL to go back to the AHL. We know for that, sure. but it feels like, and I can't really speak to it because I'm not there, but it feels like he's been, doing his job exactly like the coach would have wanted, right? 100%. Wheeler's Wheeler's one of the best. I mean, he's a guy, like you said, like it could be so easy for him to come down and just not care and yep. just be disappointed about his situation. But I think he took the complete opposite approach and it's paying off well for him. I mean, everyone loves the guy and the coaching staff loves him and rightfully so. I mean, he's a great player and he's a great person and a mentor to young guys, especially like me. I mean, I can learn so much from the guy. He's great on face-offs and he's got a really high, good hockey IQ. So things like that is just something that you can't take for granted. So to have him on the team and learn from him is, is awesome. Do you, Ryan, do you guys pride yourselves on, like, it feels like I was speaking to Joe Blandizzi the other day. I said, you're the leading scorer. He's like, yeah, but by tomorrow I might not be like, it feels like you guys are scoring <laughs> by committee, right? Like yeah. by the time this podcast comes out, you might be the leading scorer, right? So <laughs> yeah. do you, like, do you guys pride yourselves on that? Or cause a lot of people see no, th th you guys don't have anyone in the top 30 but you're one of the best teams in the league. Is that a, is that a source of pride for you? I think so. Yeah. I think that's a good thing. I think that uh, for us, it's, I mean, it shows, like you said, how deep we are and that's why we are such a good team. And I think the biggest thing too, is no one like there, there's no jealousy or anything that like you get excited for your teammates to score. And I think that's a okay. big thing. So knowing that is just like, is great. And it's always friendly competition, but to just see your, your teammates succeed is, I mean, success for yourself as well. So it's always very exciting. So, so, cause that always, that always fascinated me, Ryan, because essentially you are competing with these guys for a job, but you're also, you know, working together. So there's no sense, let's say, uh, Jesse Yulunen scores six goals. You know, there's no sense of like, uh oh, he just maybe surpassed me. None of that. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think, I mean, some people can get that way, but I don't think that that's, I mean, I think the biggest competition is just with yourself. You're just trying to become the best player that you can become. And for us to just lift each other up, I think is the best thing, best way to go about it. And I think we've done a good job with that so far. That is the exact answer fans are going to hear and your coach is going to want to hear. So let's get into some of the, some of your teammates. Um, first of all, who, who controls the music in the locker room right now? Uh, Blend, Blender does blend easy. W what is He's it? Awesome What's he playing? Um, I mean, right now we've been winning a lot, so it's always usually the same, but uh, it's Kai. He, he plays a lot of Kygo on like a sun more else. So it's actually a video on YouTube. That's uh, pretty interesting. So you might have to check that out. Okay, yeah, because I'm just an old man when it comes to music. Anything <laughs> after the 70s, and I'm like, yeah. So, okay, um, tell me, who is the loudest guy in the locker room right now? Uh, I don't, we got a lot of loud guys, but I'll have to go with Brooksy, Josh Brook. He's, well, he's the best. He's, he's so entertaining to be around, and yeah. I, I've never had a bad time with him, so I'll go with So him. let's talk about him. He seems to have essentially kind of done what you, last year, you know, it wasn't, I don't think he had a bad season. I feel like the expectations were just through the roof and the pressure was intense. 
for sure. And him, a lot like you, has kind of found his confidence this year. It's kind of just like, you know what, I'm going to... So what, you speak to him. What's happened with Josh Brook this season? Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously it's getting opportunities and then what you do with them. And I think he's gotten a little bit more of an opportunity this year and he's he's done well with it. So, and like I said, I think mentally he feels a lot healthier too. And it's it's weird. I don't know when you can just... It seems like there's not as much media around just because there's no like face to face. And I think it's a nice breather for people that just, I mean, sometimes you just want to just play hockey. Right. So I think it's a good year to just do that. And you can see that he's definitely coming along. When I sit at practice and eat two breakfast sandwiches while you guys skate super hard. And then I turn around and I ask you guys, why aren't you scoring goals? Does that bug you guys when I have a little bit of, you know, is that something you're like, geez, look at this guy. He's criticizing us right now. <laughs> no, if you can't take criticism, then you're in, and then you're in the wrong profession. I mean, you're just doing your job. So <laughs> I like to hear that. Okay. Who's the quietest guy in the locker room? Oh, for sure. Preems. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't like think... uh, talk about his psychology books with you guys or how he's going to go <laughs> no, sit in that ice bath for like three days or no. <laughs> no, I, uh, I don't, I don't think his heart rate ever gives above, gets above 70. I mean, even when he plays a game, it's just, he's stone cold. And I think that's just, I mean, it's, it's impressive, honestly. It really reminds me of another goalie and I'm not going to mention his name because I don't think it's fair, but uh, yeah, the way he prepares <laughs> and just how calm he is. Fantastic. Can you tell me more about Jesse Yulunen? Sorry, I'm trying to pronounce his name properly. I'm probably massacring it, but Hey, so far so good, right? Like this guy had North, Amer had no North American experience. He played in Europe. Let's keep in mind. That's big, but mm -hmm. he's, he's getting used to it pretty darn quick, isn't he? Oh yeah. He's uh I mean, as far as skill goes, I haven't seen, I mean, he's one of the guys that I've seen with just a crazy amount of skill. I mean, and that's, that's pretty normal for Europeans, but he's, he's top tier for me. I mean, he's got great hands. He sees the ice really well and he loves making plays, but his shot is, is unbelievable too. I mean, if you give him a scoring chance, it's usually going to end up in the back of the net. So just, I played with him for a few games and that was awesome. I mean, he's, he's a great player and I enjoy just watching him. I mean, he's, he's so skilled and he's a fun player to watch. So I think he's going to have a bright future. Let's talk about the two young guys. Um, you have two, obviously, Cam Hillis in there, and Jan Mishak is 18. I don't know if he's turned 19 yeah. yet. Like, how uh, did you guys give him any advice, or did you just kind of let him figure out? Like, he, that's really young to be playing in the AHL, right? Mm, that's crazy. I don't, I don't know how he's doing it. I mean, he's doing really well with it, too. So, I mean, that's another kid that is, I can't speak highly enough of. I mean, he's one of the greatest kids I've ever met. Like, hard so worker, nice, eh? so polite, and yeah, hardworking. I mean, he's, He's great. So, I mean, the way that he's already kind of figured that part out and he's so young, I think the sky's the limit for him. I mean, that's, I, I remember me being 18 years old and that was nothing like that. So for him <laughs> at that, that young to, to figure it out, I think it just shows that he's going to have a bright future for himself. When I had a chance to speak to Steve Steos, his coach in Hamilton, he said, as soon as Yan came over, like we arranged for him to go to the rink, right? And obviously the billet family would bring him an hour and a half early, be an hour and a half before they were scheduled to arrive, which is an hour before the game. And he said, like, I love it, but can I get there three hours early so I can practice? <laughs> so is he is he like that with you guys? Is he like, because Joel said, yeah, he's kind of always wanting to be out on the rink and in the gym. And is, is that, yeah, that's good. Yeah, through? I think that's, yeah, that's very accurate. I mean, I show up, I show up pretty early um, during practice and stuff. And I feel like he's already in the workout room biking. So <laughs> he's always about that type of stuff. He's always working on his body. I feel like he's always got a foam roller with him. So, I mean, he's, he's treats his body like a professional and he's only 18. So it's really cool to see. Now we're going to wrap this up real quick. Cause I have a million more questions for you, Ryan, <laughs> but I know you're in the middle of a really intense, intense uh, schedule. You just <laughs> got home from a long trip where you guys dominated. Um, first of all, is Michael Pizzetta still the first guy on the ice every morning? Um, I'd have to double check on that. I don't, I, I would assume. Slacking a bit? I would, no, I don't think he's slacking, but we have a lot of guys that like to get out there early. So he might have some yeah. competition now. It was like every morning they would be earlier and earlier and earlier, yeah. uh, which is a really good sign. Okay. And finally, I'd like to ask you about Alex Belzil. Um, obviously, you know, uh, there's been some slight injury issues, but how has he been in terms of being a mentor and just a teammate so far? Yeah, he's amazing. I mean, Belzy's one of the best teammates I've ever had. I mean, mentor is the perfect word for him. I mean, we always give him crap and say he's a player's coach, but he loves it. He, uh, I mean, he always, I mean, the way he plays is it's easy to follow and listen to a guy like that when he plays the right way. So, I mean, he's taught me a lot. And I think about consistency too. I mean, he's whenever, even if he doesn't have a good game, he's always coming up to you and saying, Hey, I thought you played great tonight, this and that. And it just feels good knowing that, that an older guy kind of notices that. So I think that's kind of exciting for, for me okay. to just learn from a guy like that. 
Now we're gonna, and again, I'm gonna get you to to say a little message for the fans. But finally, let's talk about Caden Primo a little bit. I, 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 like, do you ever worry about the? Do you ever kind of take his pulse a little bit just to make <laughs> sure that he's like he's ready it's to go? Yeah, it's crazy. Like last game, we were uh, he had a shutout when we won. It was one zero, and I swear he took his helmet off. He had like 25 shots, and he wasn't sweating. And me and Blender looked at each other and we we're like, "This guy is insane!" Like he just he just played a full game, and he's like nothing happens. I mean, that's when you know that you just got something special in you. So he's, he's amazing. I've, I've been friends with Phoenix for a while now and he's, uh, he's great. And it's part of the reason the future is so bright is part of the reason analysts are saying the Canadians have the, one of the deepest prospect pools and you are a huge part of that this season, Ryan, thank you so much for joining us. And finally, I'll give you a chance to end this with a message. Uh, if you'd like to say a little message to Canadians and Laval rocket fans. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I know it's hard for everyone, but uh, I appreciate all the support being at home and I hope everyone's staying safe during this, uh, these hard times and hopefully we'll be able to have you guys in the ranks, uh, come soon enough, hopefully. So thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. We saw a different side of Ryan Paling today. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to ignore the journey and only focus on the destination, the destination, but not everyone takes that same journey. And with Ryan Paling, it didn't even take him a lot, a lot of time to really find his rhythm, but it did take a tiny little bit of maturity. And, and let's be honest here. He's still a very young man. This is a level of maturity, maturity. I never really attained, um, but we're seeing it from him. We're seeing a more honest, more open and And he's been able to focus by maybe by obsessing a little less on hockey refocus on it. I know that sounds silly, but sometimes when you let go, things become a little more clear. So I, I love what I'm seeing from Ryan Paling on the ice. I even love more what I'm hearing from off the ice. This is a, a, a more mature Ryan Paling, and that is just amazing. That's exactly what we want to see. And it's reasonable that, it, you know, it took him a little bit of time to get to this point. Not even a lot. Like there's guys that are five years older that haven't reached this point yet. So very encouraging for house fans. I thank him and I thank you guys for joining us. Um, as per usual, will be alternating from one week to another. So next week, it'll be uh, L'Histoire s'écrit, which means C'est en français. Uh, it's available wherever you get your, pet, your podcast. And don't forget, rate it. Let us know exactly what you want to see. Thanks so much for joining us and have a great week. Go Habs, go. Go Habs, go.